So I came across this interesting project known as Tuono, which is Next.js, but for your Rust backend, right? So it, what it means is that you can build applications like you would build in Next.js, but the backend side at least is in Rust. So all the data fetching, for example, or how, how you know, in Next.js we use get server side props or get static props, those sort of concepts are built for Rust, but the front end, obviously, which the code your browser would run, that's in React.js, right? That's why it also says that if you have experience in Next.js, you will feel home here. So it has native TypeScript, which is obviously like awesome if you want to build, you know, in a type safe way. It has Next.js like file based routing. It has CSS and SAS module support. It has server side rendering and this server side rendering would be on Rust. And then it is hot module reload is supported, right? So I want to talk about this in general a little bit. I want to talk about Node and Next and React in general. See, on front end, you don't have any option except for using a JavaScript framework like React or like Astro or Remix or any of these, right? But on back end, you have a lot of flexibility. And oftentimes, when you are picking up a full stack sort of framework, the limitation becomes that if you want to use React.js on front end, then sure, you can do that, but then it will be a client side app because you can't run React generally on server, right? Unless you have a JavaScript runtime. Sure, you you can send assets for JavaScript to boot. So the script.js file could be sent down the wire, but you can't truly render like react dom dot render on the server itself. As far as I know, unless somebody has written some sort of adopter or something for other libraries or other runtimes, but only in JavaScript, you can run react on server, like server side programming. However, this one of the things which this project is saying that we can do server side rendering. This is a big thing, right? Because what it's saying is that in Rust itself, you can prepare the HTML skeleton or whatever, like the first paint of the browser would be like, and then you can add props and all to it, like how a normal React.js app works, right? So you send the skeleton down the line on as an HTML first, and then you hydrate the website, right? So you attach event listeners, you make sure like use effects are now getting called, states are pro properly like handled and so on. So Rust is a hard language, then writing server side code is hard as well, right? So it does say that it includes a lot of utility to make it easy, which obviously is something you would need because React in general and JavaScript in general have been there for so long that the support is extremely good when you want to run, you know, things like these on server. Extremely stable, I would say. So how is it different from Next.js? Well, this API tries to stick as much as possible to Next.js 1. The major difference is obviously the backend system. While Next relies entirely on Node, Dino, or Bun, Tuono runs the server without any intermediary runtime. This enables impressive performance improvements. Okay, so it has some sort of benchmarks as well. Again, like I'm not verifying the credibility of these benchmarks. But if you look at this, the Tuono build, I'm assuming is able to do 136,000 requests per second. That's a huge number for a React server React rendered app, right? Because there is work to do when you are running React on the server. Next.js pages router, on the other hand, is only on 11,000 requests, right? And Next.js app router is even worse at 6,500 requests. So, I mean, this is like a huge deal in terms of performance if you're just directly running it on the servers which you have. And plus, obviously, like, you know, if you are a Rust developer, you would probably want to do code in this. So, if you check out the documentation over here, you can see the way you have to pronounce Tuono is Tuono, Tuono, right? And it means it's an Italian word for thunder. So, first of all, you will install it. It's available as a cargo crate. So, you will have to set up Rust on your system, then you install it, and then you start running it. Then you will just install it, uh, set up a new project, do an npm install, and then you'll have like a structure directory, right? What I'm more interested in is seeing like how the back side of things work over here. So you can see there are two things which are happening here. The first one is that you need to create an index.rs file, which is a Rust file. And that is where the Rust logic would go. All of your requests, all of the data which you want to fetch, that would go over here. And then you will have a similar file, but with index.tsx extension in the routes. And that is where your UI in TSX or you know in React would go. So as far as I can understand, you can see that for every TSX file in general, what you also need is a corresponding Rust file. So this file would be your backend sort of for that route. And this would be your front end. And you can see the routing works exactly like how you would expect it. It's a file based routing system. So you just create a Rust file and you make this function a handler function for this and you write your Rust code, right? So over here, even in the dynamic routes, 
section, you can see you have to use some of these constructs which the library gives you. But once you return the props or the data like this, you can see you are able to consume it directly over here. So this data could be anything. You might want to sort parse this or do something with this. But in general, this is how it would work, right? It's a very fresh new project. Obviously, you can see like a lot of things are still not documented properly, but this at least gives you a starting ground, right? If you're running your own thing, or if you're running this on your own servers, you might want to experiment with a framework like this. Of course, you can build this and you can just run it as a single binary, I'm assuming, because it's a Rust project. Okay, it, you can't. So it says like the out directory is not a standalone. You can't just rely it on, the, uh, on it to run the production server. So you probably just can't get a single binary just yet. But in general, it sounds like an interesting project. It seems like an interesting project. Make sure you check out the developer also if you want to keep updated with what's happening over here. But yeah, do tell me what do you think about this? Are you guys using Rust in production or in any of your workflows? And if yes, then let me know in the comments below. We at Fermion probably would still stick with the Next.js backend and the Next.js frontend for some time, obviously because it's a huge pain to migrate a text tag when you have grown a lot in the code base. But yeah, do think about this and let me know in the comments below what do you think. That's all for this one. I will see you in the next video really soon.